Thank you for joining us once again for this evening's episode of Experience the Word. I'm Dr. Carlton Bird, president of the Southwest Region Conference, and we are grateful that you have decided to join us tonight. At this time, I want you to get on your cell phone, or maybe even on your computer, your laptop, or your iPad, and invite someone via email, invite someone through a text message, invite someone through an Instagram post or a Facebook post, and invite them to join us right now for Experience the Word. We prayed, we prepared, and we have a word from the Lord just for you. We also want to let you know that our Southwest Region Conference camp meeting is nearing very fast. That's right. Our camp meeting will begin on June the 15th, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. at Lone Star Camp in Athens, Texas. On Wednesday evening, the executive secretary of our conference, Pastor Jason North, will be our speaker. And then on Thursday, we will have programming and worship experiences all day long. On Thursday evening, our guest speaker will be Pastor Trisha Wynn Payne of Detroit, Michigan. On Friday, once again, we will have programming and worship experiences all day long. And then on Friday evening, Dr. Eric Thomas, he will be our special guest speaker. And then on Saturday, the Sabbath, praise God for what's going to transpire. At 11 a.m., Pastor Henry Wright will be our guest speaker, and we will be blessed with the music ministry from Donald Lawrence, the Oakwood University Aeolians, Myron Butler, Gail Jones Murphy, and Stephen Manders and Decree. You're not going to want to miss it. They will all be in concert as well at 5 p.m. on Saturday afternoon. And then Saturday evening, 7 p.m., to close out our camp meeting, yours truly will preach a word from the Lord with you in mind. For more information, visit our website, southwestregionsda.org, to learn more about camp meeting and what will transpire. We'll have programming and activities, not just for our adults, but also for our youth and our children. We look forward to seeing you as we seek to move Southwest forward. At this time, we're going to be blessed with our music ministry. And then following our music ministry, we will return and we will preach a word from the Lord. And we know that God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, is going to speak to you. Day.
It's time to experience the word. Time to get in the word of God. And today, we're going to the first book in the Bible. Take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 13 through 17. Genesis chapter 6, verses 13 through 17. The word of God says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. And a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Verse 17, Behold I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. God had a blessing to the readers and the hearers and the doers of his word. And this evening on Experience the Word, I want to tag this sermon title, A Storm is Coming. A Storm is Coming. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that once again we can come and we can preach your word. We thank you once again that your people can hear your word. Now I ask that you would penetrate by the power of your Holy Spirit through the internet airways, through the technological airways, and God speak for your servants here. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, and we ask you for forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. A storm is coming. As many of you know, I travel quite a bit. I'm always perhaps in the air flying a plane, or maybe I'm not flying a plane or flying in a plane, I'm not flying the plane, but flying in a plane, or maybe I'm driving and I'm driving here and I'm driving there. But you know, those that know me, that I travel quite a bit. Now, to make the time go by fast when I travel, there are some games that I've learned to play. And some of you might know these games. If I'm driving in a car and my family particularly is with me, we have learned how to master the alphabet game. Some of you know what I'm talking about. When we talk about the alphabet game, we look at the street signs or the highway signs and we count down the letters of the alphabet based on words we see carrying the specific letter we're looking for. If it's not the alphabet game when I'm driving, when I'm flying, I play every game that I have on my iPad, iPhone. Why? Because I'm trying to let the time pass by fast. Now, for the past couple of days, I've been in Houston, I've been in Oklahoma City, I've been in Orlando, I've been in Atlanta, I've been in Dallas, I have been doing quite a bit of traveling. Now, you need to understand that when I travel, I watch the weather forecast. When I travel, I make sure I go to my Weather Channel app and I see what the weather is going to look like in the city that I will be in. I watch to see if it's going to be raining. And during the winter, I watch to see if it's going to be snowing. And I watch because I don't want my plane to be delayed. If it's going to be delayed, I need to know it's going to be delayed because of the weather. And I also watch because I want to make sure that I have prepared and packed the right clothes. This past Saturday night, I was on my way from Oklahoma City to Orlando, Florida for a graduation. But on my way to Orlando, my plane was delayed. My plane was delayed because of the rain. Now, some of you know the geography of Florida. When you fly to Florida, Orlando is further north than a city called Fort Myers. But because the rain was so bad, the pilot told us he had to go down to Fort Myers, which was on the other side of the state, and come back up to Orlando in order to buy some time for the rain to subside because the rain was raining so hard that it delayed my flight. Sunday, when I left to return to Dallas, it was still raining. It was raining so bad 
that I almost missed my connection from Atlanta to Dallas. In fact, when I got to the Atlanta airport, the gate was closed. The gate door was closed. I said, oh no, what am I going to do? I've got to get home. I've got to get to my wife. I've got to get to our children. Somebody has to open up this door. And those that fly know that when that gate door is closed, that gate agent rarely opens that door to late, let late passengers onto the plane. But somebody knows about favor. Somebody knows, but God, that late in the midnight hour, God will turn that thing around. Sure enough, the gate door was closed, but then I started knocking on that gate door. And sure enough, the gate agent came up and I said, listen, I'm Carlton Bird. I was delayed because of, my, of the weather, because of the rain. Please let me on this plane. The gate agent made a couple of calls and I need you to know I was able to sit on that plane. Hallelujah, somebody. And not only was I able to sit on that plane because of freak or fly, frequent flyer miles, I wish I had a witness right now. They put me in first class. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So I was late to the gate. Gate door was closed. Gate door was closed. I knock on that door. Gate agent comes, opens the door, sits me on the plane. But then not only that, they provide a seat for me in first class. Hallelujah. When I get on the plane, they said, what would you like to drink? I said, give me cranberry juice on the rocks. Hallelujah, somebody. But I was there. But after getting on that plane, we still sat on the runway for a while. Why? The rain. It was rain. But I wasn't going to complain because, praise God, I was on a plane. Hallelujah, somebody. When I got back to Dallas, it was raining in Dallas. In fact, it rained all week long. And every time I turned on the news this past week in Dallas, I kept hearing that a storm was coming. In the Northeast, a storm was coming. In the South, a storm was coming. In the Southwest, a storm was coming. Now, you know that rain is not good for travel plans. Planes are delayed when it rains. Roads are slick when it rains. There are car accidents when it rains. People drive slower when it rains. Your hair gets wet when it rains. Your clothes get wet when it rains. Your car gets dirty when it rains. You may even get sick when it rains. Most people don't like it when it rains. But I'm here to tell somebody tonight that a storm is coming. And I'm not just talking about a little rain. I'm not just, just talking about a sprinkling. I'm not just talking about a shower, but this storm, this rain is bigger than a thunderstorm. This storm, this rain is bigger than a tropical depression. This storm, this rain is bigger than a hurricane. This storm, this rain is bigger than a tornado, but this is a storm of massive proportion that is coming. When you read Genesis chapter six, and you read our scripture lesson from verses 13 through 17. You read about Noah and you read about the great flood. But before you read verse 13, you read verse number three. And in Genesis chapter six, verse number three, the Bible is clear that God's spirit will not always strive with man. That the spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth. Matthew 24 teaches that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the coming of the son of man. So friends of mine, a storm is coming. You all not listening to me. I said, brothers and sisters, a storm is coming. When Russia starts an unprovoked war with Ukraine, lives are being lost. People are being killed. Children are being killed. And the leader of Russia won't stop. You know a storm is coming. When people go into a grocery store and they go into a grocery store to do their normal grocery shopping, and just because they're black, they get gunned down by a young racist man who subscribes to replacement theory. And you know what replacement theory is. That is the fear that non-white people will soon be in the majority in the United States. That non-white people will soon take jobs and non-white people will soon be in political power regardless of whether or not they're qualified or not. 
But just because they're not white, just because they're black, just because they're yellow, just because they're not white, whites are mad, you know a storm is coming. When in six and seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds go to school and all they want to do is learn and play, but they're gunned down in yet another mass school shooting, you know a storm is coming. When I drive up to the gas station and I'm seeking to put premium gas in my vehicle and it's over $5 a gallon, I know a storm is coming. When children are being separated from their parents at our nation's border and then they're told that one day they'll be reunited, but they're never reunited, a storm is coming. When there is continued fighting in the Middle East and the fighting won't stop in the Middle East, a storm is coming. And I need someone to know this evening, I'm not a weatherman. I'm not a meteorologist, but I'm a preacher man. And I'm here to tell you that a storm is coming. But I know and I've learned a little thing about storms. I can tell you something about rain. In fact, I want to share with you tonight four things that I've learned about rain. But the irony is that the four things I want to tell you about rain tonight aren't necessarily all that bad. In fact, the four things I want to tell you about the storm and four things I want to tell you about rain, they are pretty good. What am I talking about? Point number one I want to share with you tonight, rain washes things out. Rain cleanses things out. Rain cleans things up. Let me tell you something I've learned about rain. If the atmosphere is cold, Water molecules bond with particles in the air. And if the atmosphere then is cold, you get snow. Now, if the atmosphere is cool, and these same water molecules bond with cool particles in the air, you get sleet. But then, if the atmosphere is warm, and water molecules bond with water warm particles in the air, you get rain. So if you have cold, you have snow. If you have cool, you have sleet. But if you have warm, you have rain. Now, when it rains, things shut down. When it snows, rather, things shut down. When it snows, visibility is limited. Things are cloudy. When it snows, you get snowed in. You can't go anywhere in a blizzard. You can't go anywhere in a snowstorm. When you're in a snowstorm, you're snowed in. When you get sleet, on the other hand, you get icy roads. It's hard to drive in sleet. It's hard to walk in sleet. You slip in sleet. You slide in sleet. You fall in sleet. But when it rains, rain has a way of washing things away. Hallelujah. Rain refreshes things. Rain makes things clearer. Rain makes things cleaner. Rain makes things brighter. So when it rains, it's always not always that bad because rain washes things out. And when you ask God through the power of the Holy Ghost to come into your life, if the atmosphere in your heart is cold, your heart will bond with cold particles and your life will be shut down and snowed in. If the atmosphere is cool when you ask God to come into your life, you'll find yourself in sleeting situations. You'll find yourself slipping. You'll find yourself sliding. You'll find yourself falling. But hallelujah, when your heart is warm and your heart is warm and you ask God through the power of the Holy Ghost to come into your life, the Holy Ghost will rain down on your life. And when the Holy Ghost rains down on your life, he will clean you up. He will clean you out when the Holy Ghost comes in your life. The Holy Ghost washes you. God cleanses you. God will cleanse you from the inside out. When it rains, thank you, Jesus, saints are made out of sinners. When it rains, deacons are made out of drunkards. When it rains, prayer warriors are made out of prostitutes. When it rains, choir members are made out of club goers. When it rains, good men are made out of bad men. When it rains, humble men are made out of haughty men. When it rains, church lovers are made out of church haters. 
Conquerors are made out of cowards. Gospel writers are made out of tax collectors. When it rains, tyrants die on the spot. When it rains, ravens feed prophets. When it rains, dry seas, red seas become dry highways. When it rains, lions lay down like house dogs. When it rains, air conditioning is found in fiery furnaces. When it rains, donkeys talk. When it rains, the sun stands still. When it rains, dry dust becomes fleas and lice in defense of the children of God. When God rains, the earth quakes and the sky trembles. When God rains, rain cleans things up. Rain cleans things out. But not only does it do that, number two, uh, when it rains, another good thing about rain is you hear rain before you see rain. Hallelujah, somebody. I said, you hear rain before you see rain. You hear thunder. You hear lightning before you see it. You've got to hear God say it's going to rain before you see rain. God told Noah in Genesis 6, it's going to rain before Noah even saw rain. Noah preached 120 years about something that had never happened. You all don't hear what I'm saying. Noah preached 120 years for no one to listen to him but his wife, his three sons, and their three wives. Which means if Noah was going to preach that long, preaching the same sermon, it's going to rain. Noah could have had family worship and called it a day. Noah preached 120 years only to get in a boat full of cows, full of horses, full of elephants, full of kangaroos, full of camels, full of birds. Noah preached, it's going to rain. But why would he preach about something he had never seen before? Noah preached about rain because the Lord told him to. Noah preached about rain because Noah had faith in God. Noah preached because Noah knew God's promises were true. He knew you've got to hear God say you're going to be healed before you even see the healing. See, you got to hear God say you're going to get a new job even before you go to the interview. You got to hear God say you're going to get married before if you're a man, you see that woman. And before if you're a woman, you see that man. You have got to hear God say that your son, your daughter, your grandson, your granddaughter is going to come back to the Lord before you even see them coming back to the Lord. Why? You hear rain before you see rain. And so you better tell somebody right now. I don't see it, but I can hear it. Hallelujah. I almost gave up, but I heard something. I almost threw in the towel, but I heard something. I almost walked away, but I heard something. I almost said, forget it, but I heard something. I almost left my marriage, but I heard something. I almost walked away from my children, but I heard something. You hear rain before you see rain. Number three. When you hear something, you've got to tell somebody. Hallelujah. I said, when you hear something, you got to tell somebody. So number one, rain cleans things up and cleans things out. Number two, you've got to hear rain before you see rain. Then number three, when you hear rain, you got to tell somebody. When you hear that rain is coming, you got to tell somebody. When you hear a thunderstorm is coming, you've got to tell somebody. When you hear a tornado is coming, you got to tell somebody. When you hear a hurricane is coming, you got to tell somebody. I can hear rain, and I've got to tell somebody. I came to tell somebody tonight that God is about to rain down his spirit. Hallelujah. I came to tell somebody that God is about to bless somebody. I came to tell somebody that God is about to rain in your life. I came to tell somebody that your best days are are before you. Your latter will be greater than your past. I came to tell somebody that I hear the abundance of rain in your life. I hear somebody coming out of their rain drought, out of their depression, out of their bondage, out of their sickness, out of their illness, out of their debt, out of their dry place. God is about to bring somebody out tonight. And when you hear something, you got to tell somebody. And I can hear it in your life. And I've come tonight to tell you that God is about to bring you out. Oh, number one, when it rains, it washes things out. Number two, you hear rain before you see rain. Number three, when you hear something, you got to tell somebody. It's all going to make sense in a minute. But then number four, spiritually, 
there's a former rain and then there's a latter rain. I said there's a former rain and then there's a latter rain. What am I talking about? Look at Joel chapter 2. Take your Bibles and go with me to the book of Joel chapter 2 and we're going to begin reading at verse number 21. Joel chapter 2 verse number 21, the word of God in the book of Joel. Joel. Joel chapter 2, verse 21, the word of God says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Verse 23, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth forth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Verse 23, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain. And the latter rain in the first month, verse 24, and the floors shall be full of wheat and the bats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years, hallelujah, that the locusts had taken away. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, verse 26, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never never be ashamed verse number 27 and ye shall know that i am the midst of israel that i am the lord your god and none else and my people he says shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions and also upon my servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and the earth, blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. Verse 32, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Hallelujah. A storm is coming. I said a storm is coming. And in the spiritual sense, this is a good storm. Why is it a good storm, Dr. Bird? I'll tell you why it's a good storm. Number one, rain cleans things up. Number two, rain cleans things up, rain cleans things out. Number two, you hear rain before you see rain. I hear that something is coming, hallelujah. I hear that something is coming, that Jesus is soon to come. Number three, when you hear something, you gotta tell somebody. And then number four, there's a former rain, and then there's a latter rain, and the latter is gonna be greater than the former. Hallelujah. Now let me wrap it up this way. When you study Bible prophecy, you will remember that the disciples asked Jesus, Jesus, what shall be the signs of thy coming just before you come? He responded in Matthew chapter 24 that there would be wars and rumors of wars. Nation would rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be fires and earthquakes and famines all in diverse places. All of these, he said, were the beginning of sorrows. But if you keep reading Matthew chapter 24 and you read verse number 29, it also says that Jesus said three things would take place. Number one, he said there would be a dark day. He said, number two, the moon would turn to blood. And then number three, he said the stars would fall from heaven. When you study earth's history, you recognize that these three th events that Jesus talked about, that the dark day, the moon turned into blood, and the stars falling from heaven, you recognize that these three things have already happened. You also recognize that the wars and rumors of wars, we're living that right now. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, we're living that right now. We are living earthquakes. We are living famines. We are living pestilences in diverse places. But these three things, the sun and the dark day, the moon turning to blood and the stars falling from heaven. This is significant because these events in Matthew 24 and the events in Revelation chapter 6 have already happened under the sixth seal. We are now living in the time of the seventh seal because those three events happen in the sixth seal and under the seventh seal, that's when the Bible says, read Revelation 6, that's when the Bible says that Jesus is coming, which means the coming of the Lord is sooner than we think. We are now in the seventh seal. God is about to reign. 
God is about to pour out his spirit on all flesh. The primary application, friends of mine, of the latter rain and the former rain in Joel 2 is the restoration of adequate rainfall. The former rain fell in the fall and promoted germination, but the latter rain fell in the spring and helped bring the, crop, the grain crops to maturity. When we apply this to God's church, the former rain and the latter rain both represent the work of the Holy Ghost. The former rain or the early rain represents the outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Whereas the latter rain represents the final outpouring of God's spirit, which produces the ripening of the harvest in these last days. The time of the latter rain is the time of the loud cry that the message of Christ's righteousness is to sound from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth to prepare the people of God for Christ's return to the earth. This latter rain is not merely a shower. This latter rain is not merely a sprinkling, but this latter rain is a downpour. One of my favorite writers, Ellen White, says in Great Controversy, page 611, that the great work of the gospel cannot close with less power than that which marked or started its opening. She says that the latter rain prepares the church for the coming of Jesus Christ. I'm going to preach it like I feel it. On the day of Pentecost, with the apostles, according to Acts chapter 2, when they were all in one place together, when they were all in agreement, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, Peter says that this was that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It was spoken of the former reign. If you don't believe me, check out Acts chapter 2, verse number 16. Acts chapter 2 teaches that the disciples in the former reign were in one place, at one time, in one accord, and the Holy Ghost came upon them like never before. They turned the world upside down. Sicknesses were healed. Relationships were mended. 3,000 people, hallelujah, were baptized in one day. This was the first rain. But I'm so glad that my Bible says that the second rain, the latter rain, will be greater than the first rain or the former rain. That the events of Pentecost were just a partial fulfillment of Joel's prediction. In other words, child, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let me tell you something. God is about to do it. I can't see it yet, but I can hear it. God is about to do something. And when the people of God come together, just like the people of God came together in Acts chapter 2, the people who come in spaces sick will leave healed. People who come in blind will leave seeing. People who come in lame will leave walking. When God says something, you better believe it because if the Lord said it, you can count on it. He will do just what he says. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1, Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord in one place. And the Bible says in verse number 2, And suddenly, if you were here with me in the studio, I would say, repeat after me. Everybody say, suddenly. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. The Bible says it happened suddenly which means without warning, suddenly, no heads up, suddenly, unexpected, suddenly, without notice, suddenly, immediately, suddenly. The disciples had no idea that the Holy Ghost was coming, but the Holy Ghost just came. And now I hear God's spirit saying to us that if you would just come into a place of agreement, that if you would just come together and touch and agree, God is saying there would be mighty things that would happen in your life suddenly. Oh, hallelujah. God's going to bring about healing suddenly. God's going to bring about restoration suddenly. God's going to bring about breakthrough suddenly. God's going to bring about deliverance suddenly. God's going to bring about rescue suddenly. God says, I'm tired of things taking so long in your life. God says, there are going to be some things that I do suddenly. The sick are going to be healed suddenly. 
Cancer is gonna go away suddenly. The lame are gonna walk suddenly. The blind are gonna see suddenly. Your bills are gonna be paid suddenly. Ch marriages are gonna be mended suddenly. Chains are gonna be broken suddenly. Addictions are gonna be alleviated suddenly. Strongholds are gonna be brought down suddenly. Ways are gonna be made out of no way suddenly. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Beloved, we are living in a post-Christian society. Folk are tired of playing church. Folk are tired of seeing an outside show for an unfriendly world. Folk are tired of seeing the emphasis of policy placed over the needs of people. Folk are tired of form and fashion with no power and deliverance. Folk are tired of religion without anointing. Folk are tired of rules and regulations without relationship. Folk are tired of the way it used to be instead of the way it ought to be. Folk are tired of being about it, talking about it instead of being about it. And I don't know about you, but I want a thunderstorm. I don't know about you, but I want the rain. I don't know about you, but I want the Holy Ghost. So let it rain in Dallas. Let it rain in Houston. Let it rain in Little Rock. Let it rain in San Antonio. Let it rain in Austin. Let it rain in Alexandria. Let it rain in Shreveport. Let it rain in El Paso. Let it rain in Tulsa. Let it rain in Fort Worth. Let it rain in Oklahoma City. Let it rain in Albuquerque. Let it rain in Las Cruces. But don't stop in Southwest region, oh God. Let it rain in Atlanta. Let it rain in New York. Let it rain in Los Angeles. Let it rain in Chicago. Let it rain in Africa. Let it rain in Asia. Let it rain in Australia. Let it rain in the Americas. Let it rain in the Caribbean. Let it rain in your heart. Let it rain in my heart. Let it rain in our hearts. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. And renew that right spirit within me. Number one, rain cleans, cleanses us. It cleans us out. Number two, I hear it before I see it. I hear that Jesus is coming. Scientists say there is noise out of the constellation Orion. And that's the constellation of the star. Jesus is going to come breaking through. I hear it before I can see it. But when I hear it, I want to tell somebody. Jesus is soon to come. And then I must say, number four, that the latter rain will be greater than the former rain. Oh, hallelujah. A storm is coming. I said a storm is coming. I said a storm is coming. Does anybody want it to rain? Does anybody want the Holy Ghost to rain down on us? I'm not talking about any old hurricane. I'm not talking about Hurricane Putin. I'm not talking about Hurricane COVID. I'm not talking about Hurricane Racism. I'm not talking about Hurricane Trouble. I'm talking about Hurricane Holy Ghost. Jesus is soon to come. Jesus is coming, and the Lord's been mighty good to me. I'll tell it everywhere I go. He loosed my shackles and he set me free. I'll tell it everywhere I go. The Lord's my rock. In him we hide. He is a shelter in the time of storm. The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall lack. Hallelujah, Christ returneth. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, Christ returneth. Revive us again. A storm is coming. I said a storm is coming, but we have nothing to fear for the future, lest we forget how God has led us in the past. Rain cleanses things. Rain cleans things up. Rain cleans things out. You hear rain before you see rain. I hear that Jesus is coming, and soon I'm going to see him coming. Number three, understand that when you hear rain, you better tell somebody. And because I hear rain, I'm telling somebody Jesus is coming. And always remember this, though it seems that evil prevails, though it seems that trouble is all around us, people getting shot up in grocery stores, people getting shot up and losing their lives, help me, Holy Ghost, in elementary schools, know this. The latter rain is coming. And the latter rain is going to be greater than the former rain. The second rain is going to be better than the first rain. And eyes have not seen, neither ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them 
that love him. Get ready, my friends, because a storm is coming. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you this evening for your word. Help us to be mindful of the fact that a storm is coming, but the rain that's going to come, this is not a bad rain. Because rain cleans things up. Rain cleans things out. We hear rain before we see rain. And when we hear rain, we've got to tell somebody. And Lord, we're encouraged that the latter rain, the second rain, will be better than the former or first rain. Help us to be ready for the rain. Forgive us for our sins, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Experience the Word. We hope that through the Word of God, you have seen Jesus and you will never be the same again. Please feel free to join us next week, same channel, same time, as once again, we experience the Word. We want to remind you of our camp meeting, June 15th through the 18th. In fact, we like to share a video advertisement right now of what will transpire at Lone Star Camp in Athens, Texas, June 15th through the 18th. Camp meeting for the Southwest Region Conference is taking place this year, 2022. That's right, to our members and friends in Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Texas, and beyond. You're invited to join us in person for this powerful spiritual experience that will take place at Lone Star Camp in Athens, Texas. Beginning Wednesday evening, June the 15th, and continuing through Saturday, June the 18th, plan to be at Lone Star Camp for soul-stirring preaching, inspirational singing, heartfelt praying, social fellowship, swimming, horseback riding, basketball, great food, nature walks, and much more. Our special camp meeting guest speakers will include Pastor Henry Wright, Dr. Eric Thomas, Pastor Tricia Wynn Payne, and our very own Dr. Carlton P. Bird and Pastor Jason North. Our special camp meeting musical guests will include Grammy Award-winning gospel music artist Donald Lawrence, the International Choir of the World, the Oakwood University Aeolians, renowned songwriter and arranger Gail Jones Murphy, gospel music artist Myron Butler, and the inspiring voices of Decree. Additionally, for all musicians, choir members, and praise team singers, please plan to join our Southwest Region Conference Camp Meeting Mass Choir under the direction of Donald Lawrence as we sing praises to our God. Choir rehearsal will begin Friday evening, June the 17th, immediately following the worship experience. There will also be workshops for family ministries, personal ministries, and women's ministries, which will include practical presentations from guest television chef of the 3ABN Dare to Dream television network, Nice Collins. There will also be daily youth and children's programs, worship experiences, and activities. For more information, visit us at southwestregionsda.org. We look forward to seeing you at our 2022 Southwest Region Conference Camp Meeting. And together, let's move Southwest forward. Once again, thank you for joining us. May God continue to bless you. And remember, Experience the Word is a donor-dependent ministry. We need your prayers and your financial support to allow us to continue to provide this ministry online. There are four ways in which you can give. You can mail your gift to us at the Southwest Region Conference, 2215 Lanark Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75203. Again, Southwest Region Conference, 2215 Lanark Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75203. You can also share your gift by giving us a call. The number is 214-943-4491.
Again, 214-943-4491. You can also give your gift electronically. Our cash app is dollar sign SWRGC. Again, dollar sign SWRGC for our cash app handle. And then finally, number four, you can give your gift online via our website, southwestregionsda.org, and follow the giving prompts, and you can make your charitable donation to support Experience the Word. Through all four ways, make sure you give to Moving Southwest Forward. May God continue to bless you, and we look forward to you joining us once again next Friday evening as together we experience the world.